When we talk about programming paradigms, what are we really talking about? One way to approach this question is by examining how we deal with state. Let's look at procedural code. Each statement is simply a step to be executed, with each step manipulating state. State and the actions manipulating it are completely separate. With object-oriented code, on the other hand, each statement acts upon state. But it doesn't just act upon state, it's also encapsulated by it. The interesting thing is that state and the action are deeply entangled together. With functional code, each statement can only transform state. Therefore, state is immutable, meaning that functions cannot change state, they can only return new transformations of the original state. Each function is therefore completely deterministic. So there we have it. We've defined the three paradigms and how they differ from each other by looking at nothing more than state. So here's a quick quiz. What paradigm does this line of code use? How about this one? And what about this one? The answer is that we simply can't tell. One line is not enough to understand what's going on. The paradigm does not describe how the code is written, but how the code is structured. So we can t only tell what paradigm a piece of code is using if we can understand the structure of the code. Now, if you notice, these definitions are very vague. So what would happen if we made some code that encapsulates state, but also modifies that state step by step? What paradigm would this code fall under? You could look at the objects and encapsulation and call it object-oriented. Or you could look at the steps and how it uses modify state and call it procedural. But in a weird way, it's both procedural and yet object-oriented at the same time. So now we have this nice triangle, except there's this weird point out here, which we can call class-oriented programming. But we can do the same thing if we encapsulate state, but only ever translate it, never manipulating it we would wind up with a weird hybrid of object-oriented and functional programming. We could call that value-oriented programming. And we could do the same thing with functional and procedural pro programming. We can give that a name as well. So now if we look at our triangle, we also have these three dots on the outside. And if we connect them, we get a second inverted triangle. But we could go further. We can make code that's mostly procedural, but also class-oriented and mostly object-oriented, but also class-oriented, and so on, and so on. So now our nice triangle of paradigms has morphed into what looks like a circle. But is it really a circle? Well, if it was, class-oriented programming would be the literal opposite of functional programming. It's not, so we can't really have a true circle. Instead, what if we treat the three paradigms as axes? we would wind up with this one-eighth of a sphere, taking only the regions where each paradigm would have a positive value. All non-trivial portions of code will fall somewhere upon this surface. So if we look at some large PHP code bases, we can see some very interesting trends. Since most PHP tools haven't significantly adopted functional programming, we'll just look at the average across object-oriented and procedural. As you can see, there are a few that are mostly procedural and a few that are mostly object-oriented, but the majority of applications fall somewhere in the middle. And that's the point. For any non-trivial application, there will be procedural parts and object-oriented parts and functional parts, but there will also be these mixed parts that don't really follow a strict paradigm. And there's nothing wrong with that. So let's not get hung up on names and instead just get awesome things done.